a newly inaugurated President Biden stood on the west front of the Capitol, and here's what he had to say. My whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, and uniting our nation. Yesterday, that very same man delivered a deliberately divisive speech that was designed to pull our country further apart. Twelve months ago, this president said we should see each other not as adversaries, but as neighbors. Yesterday, he called <clears throat> millions of Americans his domestic enemies. Twelve months ago, the president called on Americans to join forces, stop the shouting, lower the temperature, but yesterday, he shouted that if you disagree with him, you're George Wallace. George Wallace. If you don't pass the laws he wants, you're Bull Connor. And if you oppose giving Democrats untrammeled one-party control of the country, well, you're Jefferson Davis. Twelve months ago, this president said disagreement must not lead to disunion. Ah, but yesterday he invoked the bloody disunion of the Civil War, the Civil War, to demonize Americans who disagree with him. He compared, listen to this, a bipartisan majority of senators to literal traitors. How profoundly, profoundly unprecedented. Look, I've known, liked, and personally respected Joe Biden for many years. I did not recognize the man at the podium yesterday. American voters did not give President Biden a mandate for very much. He got a tied Senate, negative coattails in the House, the narrowest majorities in over a century. The President did not get a mandate to transform America or reshape society. But he did arguably get a mandate to do just one central thing that he campaigned on. Here's what that was. Bridge a divided country lower the temperature, dial down the perpetual air of crisis in our politics. That is the one central promise that Joe Biden made. It is the one job citizens actually hired him to do. It is the one project that would have actually been consistent, consistent with the Congress, the voters, elected. Ah, uh, but President Biden has chosen to fail his own test. The President's rant, rant yesterday was incoherent, incorrect, and beneath his office. He used the phrase Jim Crow 2.0 to demagogue a law that makes the franchise more accessible than in his own state of Delaware. He blasted Georgia's procedures regarding local elections officials while pushing national legislation with almost identical language on that issue. The president implied things like widely popular voting ID laws to be, quote, listen to this, totalitarian, totalitarian, Ironically, on the same day, the Washington, D.C.'s Democratic mayor told citizens to bring both a photo ID and a vaccine card anytime they leave the House. The president repeatedly invoked the January 6th riot, while himself using irresponsible, delegitimizing rhetoric 
that undermines our democracy. The sitting president of the United States compared American states to totalitarian states. He said our country will be an autocracy if he does not get his way. If he does not get his way. So the world saw our commander in chief propagandize against his own country, his own country to a degree that would have made Pravda blush. There was no consistent standard behind anything the president said. He trampled through some of the most sensitive and sacred parts of our nation's past. He invoked times <clears throat> when activists bled and when soldiers died, all to demagogue voting laws that are more expansive than what Democrats have on the books in his own home state. Georgia has more days of early voting than Delaware or New York. Georgia has no excuse absentee voting, which Delaware and New York do not have. If Georgia or Texas present Jim Crow emergencies, then so do a whole lot of Democratic-run states. The Senate Democratic leaders going on cable TV and saying Georgia is greatly restricting or eliminating early voting. That's a lie, provably false. Georgia has more early voting than New York. The Democrat leader has tried to fearmonger about one rural Georgia county that condensed multiple voting locations into one. One rural Georgia county. Well, the county's overwhelmingly red. They were clearly not involved in trying to suppress Democratic votes. 70% Republican in that one county, 